Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorius. So, we have spoken a little bit in the past about the stick. Um, and in the world of martial arts in Europe, the stick, in fact, in, in anywhere in the world, um, in the world of martial arts, sticks are incredibly important. Um, for many, many reasons. Obviously, sticks have been used as training weapons instead of swords or uh, maces or various other sorts of weapon out there, as safe or cheap, disposable kind of alternatives. But in addition, of course, a stick is theoretically not a weapon. They can't really be regulated against. You can find them on the trees, uh, you can find them lying around, and if you get the right type of stick, then it can be very, very durable. And of course, at various points in peaceful society, it's been completely normal to walk around with a walking stick. So for that reason, um, walking sticks and sticks of various types, you know, shepherds, crooks and this kind of stuff, hiking sticks, have been incorporated into martial arts practice. So, what I've got here is a South African um, stick that is um, still, there's still a type that you can still buy in South Africa. This one's probably got some age to it, it's probably mid 20th century. I've shown this before on video. Um, it's not quite a knob carry, the knob's quite, not really big enough, but these types of sticks, or certainly I use this as a training one because it's very, very strong and I can't really do any harm to it. But versions that are more like a typical European walking stick that might have an ivory or a silver top, might have an ebony shaft, this kind of stuff, um, have fundamentally three main ways of being used. Not to say there aren't other possibilities as well, but there are three main ways that these can be um, deployed. And I have spoken about this in previous videos, but just to recap slightly on those. So, number one is holding it by what I'd call the handle end or the knob end. And, and basically using it quite like a, um, well, like a stick really, but a little bit like a sword. So using it to give blows with the quick and very nimble end um, of the stick uh, whilst holding the slightly heavier handle end, as it were. The other option, of course, is to reduce your speed and nimbleness and have the heavy, heavy end as the hitting end. So the stick now moves more slowly, but hits with more impact force at the end, okay, more kind of um, impetus. So that makes it a bit more akin to things like shillelagh or indeed things like maces and clubs and knob carries and things like this. So for hitting really hard and shattering things and having a lot of effect on the target, clearly using the heavy end is generally speaking going to be better in perhaps a war type situation. But if you're defending yourself against someone who's got something quite nimble like a a sword stick or a, perhaps even a sword or a knife or something like this, using the holding the back end, the heavy end, and using the light quick end might be preferable. And remember, of course, whilst hitting with the heavy end hits with more mass, um, mass times velocity, The if you're moving the tip faster, whilst the end might be lighter, it's going to hit with a lot more speed and it's going to accelerate more quickly um, due to inertia. So. There's a trade-off there. You have to decide, do I want to hit uh, um, with a little bit more impact power or do I want to hit a little bit more quickly and more nimbly and be able to move things around? So, those are the two obvious ways that people normally think about, either heavy end out or light end out. Um, but the other way which was used in the Victorian and Edwardian periods is actually quite similar to the way that we see swords used when fighting in armour in the medieval and renaissance periods. That is sort of half-sorting. It's also quite similar to the use of things like uh, bayonets or so-called pugil sticks, okay? So sometimes we do see the stick used this way and it can be used, obviously either end can be used to hit like that. It can be used to bash and to push. Indeed, it can be used in locking, um, in locking up arm joints and wrestling, essentially, to facilitate and aid wrestling or used in conjunction with wrestling. And obviously you can switch between any of these three. So you might, you might start off getting some distance when someone attacks you, um, hitting their knife hand or whatever, hitting their weapon hand with the light end of the stick. You might see uh, an opening come up to someone's head and whack them in the head with the heavy end of the stick. But if you're crowded in or in a, a small room or people are kind of, um, kind of grappling, trying to grapple with you, you might be using the stick more in more close quarters like this or even to, to assist a, a throw, this type of thing. So those are the three main ways you can use um, the walking stick or any stick, frankly. 
But there's one other thing I want to point out, and that is when striking with the stick, I think a lot of people who come from a background of sword-based martial arts, we're very used to swinging things. But we swing things, we tend to swing things with the edge leading, okay? Um, so we tend to think about these things as cuts. Now, mechanically, cuts which strike in line with the forearm are, generally speaking, going to have more force to them and strike through the thing that's being hit. But, if we look at how the body mechanics works for a second, if I just swing through here, so I've got right shoulder, right hip, right leg in front, and I'm striking from the right hand side. As I come through here, if I'm leading with the edge, there comes a point at which the arm and the body naturally starts wanting to curve, uh, to kind of roll around, change orientation. Now, in sword-based martial arts, we train a lot to try and overcome that, uh, certainly while you're going through the target, so the edge leads all the way through, and then you let it turn to come around the other way. But, with a stick, you don't need to, because there's no edge. Um, there's a sort of metaphorical edge, a <laughs> even metaphysical edge. There's, there's an edge in terms of the thing which points in the same direction as the motion of the stick, and your knuckles and your wrist and your forearm. Okay, so that will hit with most force, but there are blows that are done within stick fighting systems, whether they're Portuguese or um, Italian or French or British um, stick fighting systems, which don't hit with the true edge as such, but instead kind of wrap. And if you notice as I strike there, I start to turn at this point, and I'm actually hitting what would be the inside flat if it was a blade. So hitting here and then straight through again. Now this enables, by having a more natural movement like this, it enables you to whip the weapon through much more quickly with less resistance in your body compared to try and keep the edge aligned, if there was an edge. But in addition to that, it enables you to strike at different angles. So one example uh, would be actually striking with the kind of inside flat as I come around here. Now, if you imagine someone's blocking either point down or point up, a blow, or even just with their arm, um, a blow coming in from here. If I cut with the true edge and they block, you, the position at which I am when they block, my point will be offline and no real threat to them. But if instead, as I strike, I'm doing this, the point at which they block, they may still get hit in the head. In other words, if they put a guard or a ward in, point down or point up, they're likely to get hit around the edge of that ward. And it's possible that some systems using very curved swords made use of this. In fact, there's good evidence to suggest that they did. And um, that might be one possible reason why we see such an expressive and large yelman on things like the Turkish Kilich and certainly some Indian and other Middle Eastern swords as well. Um, so that's just one example, okay, coming around this way. So we're actually striking with the tip of the stick kind of backwards, okay? But you can apply it to other angles as well. Imagine this one coming across here. So this is even more exaggerated. The cut number two, if it gets stopped, because the arm is kind of leading to a certain extent, I mean, you want the weapon to be leading as much as possible, but inevitably, if you're coming from your, across your body side, your arm is gonna cross in front of your body to do that cut, unless you only come from the wrist, which with a stick, we're not really gonna do very much because it would be too light. Um, so having struck from here, with a straight blow, if that gets stopped, the weapon's completely offline, as it were, and no threat to the opponent. But instead, coming around here, if we let it whip through like this, bam, okay, that can either be with the back or the flat. You'll notice the angle at which it would get stopped at now, it's now pointing towards the opponent. Whereas if I struck like this, it's pointing away from the opponent. You're the opponent looking at me at the moment. So that can come around like this, and again, you can come around the person guard either way, okay? And that could be applied to any height. Could be applied to a knee down here or a hip or whatever. So those are just two examples. Um, there are others as well. There are other things we can do. So many of you who do, if you've ever dabbled in or practice medieval um, German martial arts, whether it's longsword or messa, you'll be familiar with movements like this, the Zwerch or twitch, as it's sometimes called, okay? 
So sometimes known as the helicopter of death. But getting the edge alignment right with that is quite difficult. Um, whether you're doing it with the front edge or whether you're doing it with the back edge, okay, it's a little bit tricky to get the edge alignment convincingly good enough. Usually it's targeted at the top of the head or the sides of the head, so it doesn't matter that much. You're not going to chop through a lot of material. You're just aiming to do a nasty wound on an exposed body part. But uh, with a stick, you can do these sorts of movements, like a whipping sort of movement, and you can do it with the flat more easily, um, because of course it makes no difference, it's a cylindrical rod, it doesn't matter whether it's the edge or the flat. Um, so these are some things to think about. There's also, imagine someone striking in towards me here, okay, so there are counter strikes you can do, so rather than just blocking the incoming strike, however I want to block it, I could step off line and hit the person's arm. Now, I could just do that as the blow comes in. I could step off line and I could essentially cut through it with the front edge through their forearm. But another option to make my hand safer, instead of cutting down here so my hand is in line with their blow coming in, because I can use the flat of my stick and have just as much or almost as much percussive force as if I used the edge, I can, instead of being at this angle, where my hand is sort of possibly, especially with no handguard, at danger from their descending blow, instead, I could change it to this angle. That means my point of impact is still the same, but my hand is no longer in line with their trajectory. So as their blow comes in, I can hit the thing off like that way, bam, coming down onto the top of the forearm, or onto their weapon to try and knock it out of their hand. So I'm hitting with the flat of the stick. So I hope that gives you something interesting to think about. Sticks are, I think, very underrated and uh, they can never be banned. <laughs> you can't ban trees, you can't ban sticks. These will always be around. And I think more people should study the arts of the stick and also they're complementary to the arts of the sword and the knife as well. Um, and whether it's as a self-defense implement or just something to have fun with, the many, many different forms of stick fighting be it Jogger de Pau or um, Lacan or various other stick fighting or Bartitsu, various other systems that uh, include the stick in its different ways of using it as well. Very, very diverse, many different systems and sticks are fun to collect as well and certainly fun to wave about and when you go walking in the woods or hiking or whatever you can always take a stick with you and wave it about and get a bit of extra practice in. Anyway, I hope that's been um, interesting. Please give me a like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys soon for another video. Cheers folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks.